as we move into this best of three this evening. As we mentioned on Monday, as I know a lot of uh, viewers are new to Brood War, this is actually going to be a best of three because mm -hmm. if we had a best of five or even a best of seven yeah. as it's been in the past of SSL, then we might be here until uh, we might bleed into the ASL finals. So, uh, <laughs> Especially since you have a player like Soul Q is known for being very defensive. Free is known to do that sometimes, but neither player has really been playing that style lately, which makes this very, very exciting. Uh, Free, one of the best Protoss versus Zerg players of all time. I think he has the second highest uh, PVZ ELO ever, at least uh, previously in the Kespa era. Facing off against Solki, a uh, guy who's a former teammate of his, who's been really crushing it. I think this will be Solki's fourth game in five days. Uh, so, hey everybody, we are on screen in the Nexon Arena, where you guys can come watch not only this game, but also our uh, finals. That's uh, right. Which will be coming up later. That's right. So finals will be coming up soon on June 10th. So just a week and a few days away from now on the weekend. So don't miss it. And don't forget the ASL finals will be this weekend as well on yeah. Sunday. So two great Brood War finals coming up. We're hitting the middle of summer here. We're getting into it. And uh, it feels good. feels warm. And uh, so does my heart with all the Brood War that we've been having. So this is important, right? Okay. The winner will face effort in the grand finals. A lot of fans don't want to watch that ZVZ finals. So <laughs> you're hoping your boy no. Free is going to come in and, and win it. But... I think he's massively the underdog. Solki has been playing way better games recently, so we'll see if he's prepared really good strategies. He said in his interview he has uh, you know, prepared how to deal with Solki's more newer, aggressive sh style he's been showing in ZVP, so mm -hmm. we'll see if he can make it happen. Yeah, so uh, if you've been watching a lot of Freeze games lately, specifically uh, here in the SSL, uh, we'll have some stats to show you about that. Uh, all right, coming back to that, here is where we are in our SSL playoffs. We've got, we're in the second round right now in both the Classic and Premier because we've been combining our playoff days. And that means that we'll have the uh, the winner from our third and fourth place matches now face off against the uh, player who is seeded into round two based on their placement from the group stages. That's right. So, you know, basically it's a gauntlet format, what you would see in um, Pro League in the past if you're a big StarCraft fan in terms of how playoffs work. So tonight's matches will be between Free and Soki. That'll be our classic match for the evening. And then Biel will face off against Solar for the ZVZ uh, semifinals, if you will, quote unquote, uh, in the second round of Premier Playoffs. The winner, of course, will advance to face Innovation. So may the best Zerg win. It's going to be a good yeah. series tonight uh, in the later stages. I feel like that one could be pretty close. This one, I'm hoping that Free can show us some great games. I'm not 100% sure. Here's our map pool, though. Circuit Breakers, Blue Storm, and Medusa. Now, uh, Solki did just play against Bisu in the ASL third, fourth place match, and Bisu crushed him. He got a lot of revenge out there. Solki uh, lost that one to three, and so now going up against another Protoss Dragon. Uh, definitely has his hands full. Uh, last time they fought, it was on Neo Medusa, as was mentioned in their interview. But we'll be starting things out on Circuit Breakers, which is one of the most balanced maps ever made. That's right, and not only is it one of the best maps, it's Freeze map choice because he actually was the higher seed. He got to choose his map, and this is the very first map that Sulky lost actually in the match against Bisu. So yeah. it's a good map choice here for Freeze. Clearly, he's done his research. And if you're going to try to outplay a player just straight up in terms of a best of three like this, and you have the map choice, you want to play on a map where your opponent has just done poorly in a regular game, right? You don't want to pick a map like if Bisu had cheesed him on that map, and we watch it, it's like, well, I don't. It's like, aha, he's battling Circuit Breakers. Like, no, that's not actually the case. He struggles yeah. in the mid to late game on Circuit Breakers is more of a, a conclusion you could draw from watching that last PVZ. So, like the map choice from Free, I think he's approached this series intelligently. The interview alone kind of gives me the vibes that he's really de delved deep in the research, has been asking pro gamers what they've seen when they've hit Solki on Fish, for example. So, hoping for the best out of this best of three. Uh, yeah, certainly am. I think it's going to be very good. I'm kind of sad that we only get to see a maximum of three games. Could watch these guys play all day long. But here we go. We are about to get into game number one of our semi-final matchup. Here is our first player, the Protoss Dragon, the legend, Free. Free, man, his entire career has been a series of almost getting to the finals. He's had four semi-final appearances, and even though this is a playoff format, you could argue this is kind of a third, fourth place situation. If he drops out here, he'll take third place in this tournament, and we'll, it'll be the fifth time in his career he's gone almost all the way, but not quite actually made it to that grand finals. If he wins this one best of three, he will go to his very first grand finals ever 
Now, Solky, of course, never been a Brood War finalist, but has several titles in StarCraft II as well. Well, that's going to do it. Let's go ahead and introduce our second player, Solky. He is a uh, kind of a man on fire right now. He stomped his way through the Thrill Star League, which was going on last month. He uh, made it all the way to the semifinals of the ASL before losing to Flash. And, uh, you know, he's been playing so much StarCraft lately that it's going to be really exciting to see a man who is just insanely on point. His practice has never looked better. And he also has a lot of great experience in this matchup from having just recently played against Bisu. That's right. And he's never made it past the round of 16 in a Brood War League. He's won several StarCraft II tournaments. But now is his time to prove himself as we go into game number one. As mentioned, the first map will be Circuit Breakers. Let's go into it right now. Game number one, free versus Soul. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to game one of our SSL Classic semi-final set. It's a best of three between our Protoss player, Free, and his opponent, spawning on the upper right-hand corner of Circuit Breaker, our yellow Zerg Solki. Here we go, man. It all comes down to this best of three for these two. The ZBZ Finals is on the line, and both of these players having their first uh, you know, championship potential, their first right. Grand Finals in Brood War. And, you know, we're spawning here, of course, on this four-player map vertically. So the Overlord Scout here for Solki is very lucky and will scout free immediately. But in terms of how Solki has been playing this matchup, you can look back at his previous series against Free. We talked about it a little bit briefly in the interview, where he's used this um, very much aggressive Hydra style, whereas Free has been trying to find holes in the play, trying to go for Zealot drops, Zealot run bys with the uh, speed upgrade for the Zealots. And so he's just been looking to break him at the front, prevent him from taking a third base, and has been going more on the aggressive side than on the teching side, sometimes even skipping lur lurkers for a long time or a more Ling heavy, a more Hydra heavy style in this matchup. So what's been really cool about watching Free, especially in their last series they played a, a couple weeks ago in the uh, regular season of SSL uh, Classic, is that Free just seems to have this kind of man lot style where he gets his plus one speed upgraded Zealots and Sulky is just not ready for them. Like you were talking about, he goes very Hydra heavy army and Hydras just don't do well when they've got Zealots right on top of them. So. Um, that, that has been the timing that Free has really used to punish Solki. Bisu used the exact same style against him to crush him in the uh, S in the ASL third fourth place matches. So uh, he's really got to find an answer to that. Maybe that is playing more defensively like his previous style was, but get a chance to see how that works out tonight. As that Overlord will get a chance to scout Free early. So we're going to go right into the main base. The probe, of course, seeing the Overlord, will head directly to the top right. The drone scout is uh, going to come back now as well. So we'll get his first glimpse here in the main base. Let's see, pretty safe follow-up here. The hatch into the pool. No gas just yet. Just wants to take an economic approach. Wants to have the full info before he actually commits to anything. Ooh, and really cool to find that sneaky little probe. You never want to leave a probe hidden. That's when you uh, wake up with pylons in your base. So you never want to have that as a possibility. Now, that wouldn't have been a possibility here, but just keeping an eye on the probe, always a good idea. It allows it, pre or prevents it from getting these delayed scouts and getting even more information from the Protoss player. It's not out of uh, the realm of possibility as well for there to be a gateway and a forge. So until he sees that there's something next to that gateway, um, it's better safe than sorry. Because there are strategies in StarCraft Brood War where you make one gateway on a forge and use Zealots to help cannon push a base, for example. Mm -hmm. Not going to be this one, and whoa! Okay. Going straight into a robo facility with this one. Now, we knew it wasn't going to be a Forge Fast yeah. expand, but didn't expect this kind of shenaniganry. Yeah, now so we're going to see some maybe two gate, three gate pressure off the one base, not the fast tech to robo. 
Now, uh, crucially enough, Sulky does have his Overlord over the natural expansion for free, so he will see that there isn't a Nexus there, and you normally would not maybe expect to see uh, uh, this much committed pressure from our Protoss player. Ling's running across the map, though, could really punish Free for not having a whole lot here back at his base. Yeah, he's going to need to bring a probe down here, potentially, unless his development... Yeah, that's not probe. tight. He yeah. didn't have the Zealot in the right spot on the ramp. I needed a probe there to tight wall this. Looks like the Lings, for the most part, have turned around. Just the one Ling comes in here, but obviously the most important part of all of this is scouting the Robo. The robotic support bay just put down in his oh face. And so now, Sulky, known as a defensive player, known for his strong defense against cheeses, all sorts of wonky strategies, will be prepared for this. He already has the Hydrogen in place, so he just needs to make sure he places them in a correct position to stop the shuttle from getting into the main base. Let's see what Free does from here, because the transition obviously is is pretty tough. He's going to have to still attempt this drop. He can't just say, aha, right. and cancel it and make a Nexus. That would entirely put uh, Sulky basically just in a free win position. So he has to try to make this work with all the cards stacked against him. And that's why you've got to have something to block your ramp if you don't know that the Zerg is, is uh, coming. You still should blindly have a probe there if you're hiding something this important. Yeah, you, can, you can actually block that ramp with one Zealot, if I'm not mistaken. You just put it right in the middle. Um, and sometimes you can do uh, wacky glitches to get through, but let's not talk about that. The biggest thing is that Free has been totally scouted. He doesn't have an expansion on the way, and Solki has got three bases. He knows what's coming his way, and he has that Hydra Den just ready to go. He just continues to confirm there's no Nexus. And it's just going to make sure he has enough Hydras out to defend. Ling's obviously going to be decent against this too. Does finally finish speed and we'll clear up that probe. Well, this is a disaster. Even now taking the Nexus is going to be difficult with all these Ling's out here on the ground. Oh, he's got the shuttle speeds in a sense across the map. And he's actually going to have to use this to defend, or rather just to push the Zerglings back away, instead of just sending it all the way across the map. Because there are a lot of Zerglings out of the map, and even the first Scarab duds out. Okay, well, I mean, he said he had some strategies prepared here for Sulky. This is his map choice, the Circuit Breakers. Go! This is going to be so disastrous. Okay, looks like the Lings actually do bug out here on the low ground. He's going to lose a few there to that Scarab shot. This means that this is still an am amazing position for Sulky. He lost a few Lings, but there's not even Reavers in his base. He has three bases up and running. He's actually starting to get that third base saturated. Yeah, he he's droning behind this. He's like, adding a bunch of Hydras, too. Like, I don't know if there's ever going to be a second Nexus in this game, Rapid. Uh, it certainly doesn't look like that, Wolf. Uh, with more and more Zerglings streaming up the ramp, this is not an easy spot to break because there are a very, there is a very deep uh, line there. But, whoa, Hydra's in perfect spot to defend. Even though those initial Zerglings do die, the next few will make it into the base. And, wow, pop that Dragoon at the ramp. Yeah, Scarab actually helping out there in the fight. The buggy Scarab. Okay, kills a few Hydras here, forces the drones to evacuate. This is it. This is Free's moment. He has to find critical damage here, or he is just going to die to the Hydralis follow up attack that's oh, coming across the map. And I really He's love. He's got a cannon on top of the ramp. <laughs> Is that, is that how you're defending here? I, I don't know, man. So a drone drill through the Zealots just to make it all the way back. And, and the Hydra's being set oh! aggressively. Can't need to get right on top of this Reaver. That's a great shot! So many of them, and another Scarab will kill off almost the entire rest of that Hydra army. Solki overcommits up a ramp with nothing uh, on top waiting for him. And it's, or the only thing on top waiting for him is this Reaver. Now, back in the main, where is it going to hit? Only one drone kill there. Well, there's but not, not a whole lot of mining here now, Rapid, and he's going to force Moss mining over here at the third base. Oh, man. It's okay made the aggressive choice to send his Hydras across the map rather than defending against the shuttle that he knew was on its way. Look at, how, look at how many probes he has on one base, too. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's still okay for Solki because he does have that third base up. Even though he lost a bunch of drones, he can re-drone more quickly. Um, but this does give Free an opening to take that natural. Absolutely, finally. You know, and that shouldn't have happened. The Hydras, like you said, kind of blindly going up the ramp. No lings or anything to spot for them. Just wants to be very cautious with this shuttle. It's okay if he eventually loses it, because uh, obviously he will. Otherwise, he's not going to be finding more damage with it. But just be cautious, be conservative. Don't try to overcommit and make something happen. Just look for opportunities with the shuttle. Looks like you may even consider bringing it home to grab maybe a second Reaver. So the Overlord will come over here and scout this Nexus. Uh, we're going to finally see the Stargate come out. We're going to see those Corsairs coming in. I'll probably see the Observatory come up pretty soon too, as Lurkatech should be on the way. This is so weird, because if you just drop us into this game right now, it probably looks at least a little bit normal. Uh, 
And then you realize that it was super crazy there for a while, and if, if Zolki had rather kept his Hydras back at his own base, he'd have a gigantic army, tons of drones, and Free could do nothing against it. So uh, instead, the game kind of evens out. Nice Overlord positioning. Scouts that Free is, in fact, continuing to go, or at least try to go for this harass. Yep, the shuttle is sneaking around now to the left side of the main base, just trying to find anything he can. Obviously, once that Spire is finished, that is going to be the end of that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, everything in this game looks like you could you could kind of look at it and be like, okay, this looks like it was a little bit weird, but I can see where we're at now. But the only strange part, of course, is those uh, Reavers there, which are not going to be useless, but definitely, um, it, for a moment there, it looked like he might not be able to defend. So at this point, uh, we are going to see, oh my god, that was a good scare hit right on the drones. Lots of damage being done to the shuttle. It will fall, and so will that first initial Reaver. Actually going to target the Zealot onto some drones here. Actually doing a decent amount of damage. Once again, forcing drones off the line just with the Zealot now after that uh, Scarab shot. So now that the Spire's nice and have Scourge out, but she doesn't need him anymore. The shuttle is dealt with. So finally, the Corsairs are going to come around and push away the Overlords. Right. This game really does start to look normal. Obviously, there's been less money mined here for free overall. Um, and there are a lot of Hydras already on the map. That's what I'm most concerned about is, is he going to be able to get the Templar Archive out? Is he going to have those money storms we saw him have on Neo Medusa? Right. Um, so just to you know, strategically uh, give kind of an overview, uh, Free's uh, army was very strong there for a little bit. He has the Zealots in front and then the Reavers that were de dealing a lot of damage. Uh, that really dies to Mutalisks. So instead of allowing Sulky to just go Mutas, he has instead preempted that, gotten these Corsairs out. And you really never want to try to fight the... Uh, um, the Protoss player in a race for the air control because Corsairs are just so good. But if you can kill the early Corsairs, then that makes a big Muta switch a lot more viable. Yeah. It makes the Scourge here to try to remove the Corsairs so that uh, he doesn't have to worry about his overlords anymore. And it's very taxing to deal with the Corsairs that have plus one as well as defend your base against the Zealot attacks that we're going to see once the Zealot leg upgrade finishes in just a minute. Leg enhancement. Looks like these Scourge were actually missed by the Corsair. Just yep. gonna try to camp over here. So you want to camp those Scourge right over the Stargate, and then as soon as a Corsair pops out, you kill it. Instead, he's trying to take out a shuttle that might come out, uh, but I think there's already a... Yeah, you, we already saw that shuttle run by, so I don't know if that's necessarily uh, as uh, you know uh, recommended. There is that Corsair being escorted by its other little Corsair buddies. The Scourge looking to come in and pick something off, but they are a little bit too far away. There's a cannon. And now that one ramp. dies, they can't do their combo and blow anything up. Now, he yeah. wanted to see if the High Templar uh, were out yet or not with those Scourge too. He sees that he knows the High Templar are not ready. It looks like one Corsair is going down. Not significant okay. compared to this push. No. He knows that uh, uh, the High Templar just popped out. Like, he saw them spawn, so he knows it's very unlikely that we'll have Storm. And if, they, if Storm does finish, it's going to be very few Storms available yeah. for these High Templars. So, this is a really good timing, and the Scourge gave him the information. He needs to be careful about these Scarabs, though. Yeah, this could go absolutely horribly for Solky. Breaking a, uh, a cannoned front there at the natural, breaking that wall with two Reavers behind it is just not going to happen with a purely Hydra army. He definitely gave some real thought to it, but I think remembering the Reavers being there and remembering that extra detail in this game is like, ooh, two Photon Cannons as well. I just don't want to try this. He has a fourth base up at the 12 o'clock. I, I don't think Sulky has any Spore Colonies back at home, so it's only going to be Hydras that are trying to stop these uh, uh, Corsairs from killing every single Overlord. And I think right now there is a, a there's a, a vast dearth of anti-air defense here for Sulky. Yeah, and look at this. You can see he's going to pick off another one here. These Corsairs do have plus oh, one, of course. Oh, Scourge, why is your AI so bad? It's just stopping there because they're on the rally and not going right for those Corsairs. Okay, another drop over here. Storm drop on the ramp. Well Ooh. done. Perhaps he was scared it was a reaver, so pulled the drones and that actually stacked them up on the ramp. Surprise. Hey, that is uh, it's not the reaver you're looking for. So Scourge continue to fly over here and scout out uh, Freeze base, but he's just in an insanely good spot right now. He's got High Templar with Storm. We already know how effective that could be. And he has a million zealots that are going to stand right out in front. These two reavers, he will have backing this up. Okay, the scary thing here, for, though, for Free is that he doesn't have a third base yet, so he wanted to be aggressive here because he has this powerful army, has the proper tech, all those storms you just described, but at the same time, uh, you know, without a third base here, 
Uh, the attack would have been an all-in if he committed to it. So what he wants to do, obviously, with this huge Zealot Force is do a run-by into these uh, satellite bases, the 12 o'clock specifically, while harassing with Corsair. Instead, it looks like he's going to be forced to defend here as Lurkers do burrow. No observers whatsoever with this army. He skipped the observatory entirely. Oh, no, Shuttle will get picked off. I'm guessing it did, in fact, have a few High Templar in it. Uh, probably didn't have Reavers, that would have been a bit much bigger loss, but still, a uh, great grab there by Solki. Means he will have to worry a lot less about harassment, and will allow him uh, a little bit of freedom to get his fourth base up and running. This is an easy kill, nicely done, knowing the priority to target there for the Scourge. Just knows the amount of time it takes to kill this, so nice free kills here for free. Um, no pun intended, but... Again, no observer means that fighting this army is a little bit of a tall order right now, as it continues to kill so many overlords. This yeah, entire game. That's been a real liability there as uh, one Corsair does get picked off. Uh, a real liability for Soul Key. He's lost a lot of overlords. He's had to replenish them. He does have a fourth base up, so that's a lot of hatcheries giving him uh, you know, a lot of um, uh, larva to work with. But here comes a big lurker drop. He's not pulling the probes. Oh my god, finally pulls them. How many will go down there? It looks like three or four or five or so getting taken out while Sulky continues to hemorrhage overlords. Does he still just not have an observatory? Like, I, Oh my god. I, oh my god. so bad. Okay, oh, have, oh my god! That's 20 oh. kills right there. Sorry, it's, uh, 11 oh. kills right there. And... There's 12 kills on one and 10 on the other. Yeah. Uh, that is ludicrous damage right now. 11 from those and uh, 20 in total. Like, uh, just no detection whatsoever and no preparation for this drop. Having the most of his units out on the map. This is what you could do as a Zerg when you see this big zealot clump in the middle of the map is to just go for a drop like this when you know that your opponent is not expecting it, he's focused elsewhere. Now, uh, Solki has actually hidden a, a little clump of his forces down to the bottom left-hand uh, corner. I think he's uh, both scouting and now can bring them back in for a potential flank as Free moves across the map. Free knows he needs to get damage done right now. He's taken a major economic hit on his brand new third base. Uh, he's not going to have it fully saturated either. So here we go, a big cloud of Scourge trying to close on the those Corsairs. And there's finally the Observers looking to take out these Lurkers. Okay, he's got a, still a really strong army here and he has plus two. This is a really nice timing window here. All you do is kill Whoa! those Lurkers. Oh, yeah. Huge storms all over everything. Free not moving with his zealots, but everything dying for Soul Key. At least he does get some of those dragoons picked off on the backside. Beautiful storm here. He get three of those lurkers. One more would finish them off. He just needs to push this army forward here and not get caught by those reinforcements coming for the 12 o'clock. He's just going to hit this base hard, killing spawning hydras over here as well. The plus two attack here makes us a really nice timing for Free. Now this is the entirety of Free's army. If he loses this, he very might well lose the game. There's a lurker egg block on the ramp, which is going to do a great job defending that main. And it looks like there's still more overlords trying to ferry forces in here. That's but it. that's going to be a GG. No way to deal with Free's army. Sulky taps out. What a first game. I mean, oh now I've seen, we've seen Reaver drops in the SSL. We've seen everything. They're from PBZ, Reaver drop. Uh, pretty rare right now in this meta to see that Soki dealt with it initially very well with getting that scout off, so it didn't feel like it was going to be very successful. Then he had all the tools ready to defend, and the game really took a turn for the worse for Soki in the early game when he yeah. walked the Hydras up the ramp and ended up dying uh, with mo the majority of those to these Scarab shots. So that was the big issue there. I just feel like that was wholly unnecessary. You could have just continued to kind of Camp the low ground, build up a larger Hydra force, as you were saying, just make sure that the Nexus doesn't go up. Yeah, so if we're on a map like Jade at that point, then that makes this game is totally different because then you're on the high ground pushing to a low ground main. And that makes it really easy to pick off the. Uh uh, the uh, Reaver if yep. it's too far forward. Uh, in this game, we had the opposite situation. Sulky, instead of staying back and defending with his Hydralis, chose to send them across the ramp and try to, or across the map and try to push up a ramp against a Reaver with Zealots to block. That's just never going to work out. And you could see even uh, after he had defended and got his third hatchery, three hatcheries up, he tried to push into uh, Freeze may, uh, Natural again. And there's two cannons, two Reavers, and Zealots there. And it's like, well, you just can't break that with Hydralis unless you just really have overwhelming numbers. Yeah. So.
It didn't matter because he just didn't have enough army to defend at that point. Free knew how to push his advantage and will win game number one. And that'll send us into game number two, our possible deciding match of the night. It's Sulky versus Free, game number two. Here we go, guys. We're going into Blue Storm for this one as we go into this match. So as you said, could be the last one of the playoffs here for SSL Classic. Winner of this best of three will go up to face effort. Free is one win away from his very first Brood War Grand Finals. Will this be his moment right here, right now? Let's find out as we go into game number two. storm uh, a lot of early opportunities a lot of uh, late ones as it does get split apart but let's go ahead and introduce our players our protoss player free and his zerg opponent sulky that's right of course free up to the top right in purple sulky the bottom left in white as he go into this one so you know Ooh. we knew we were gonna have to see something unusual from free or he was gonna have to play better than he's ever played before sure he already beat sulky in the uh, regular season. He already beat him in the round robin by defending a narrow defense, by the way. I mean, it was razor thin as thin as it gets uh, defense of that attack there with the Hydras. We're gonna see a more uh, normal expand here, by the way. But yeah. he, he beat him in a straight up game, sure. And I know that, you know, a lot of people watching would say, well, I wouldn't understand why Wolf would say Free was the underdog if he already beat Sulky once this season. But Sulky has gone deeper, more consistently in Brood War right now. and. Um, even though this is Free's best matchup historically, after the win over uh, Mind on Monday and the near win over Flash, you have to argue Soki is in better form right now. And as Free said, he knew he was going to probably struggle against Soki's aggressive style, so he, had, he said he had builds prepared. And one way to get into the head of an aggressive player in this matchup is to kind of mess up his build and then force him into a situation where he wants to attack, but he can't, right? With the Reavers out, it's like, that's a totally different ballgame. Usually it's, okay, I'm trying to harass with Zealots, I'm going to get Psy Storm, I'm barely getting Psy Storm time, barely getting Psy Storm time. Now he's sitting there with two Photon Cannons and two Reavers, it's like, well, almost no army's going to beat this, so I like the way that he approached this. All right, now, uh, Forge uh, expansion coming up for free. Uh, pretty standard. Uh, didn't used to be that way. It used to be that if you went for a fast enough Nexus, or this fast a Nexus, uh, as we will see coming up, then Zerg players would just kill you. But players got good enough to, at defending uh, with this type of opener that Protoss uh, should be able to start that Nexus. Oh. And whoa, whoa, okay. That, that drone is working overtime. That, that is the try-hard drone. Instead of like spinning around three times before throwing down the hatchery, he just instantly drops it. So uh, I would say great drone control. I don't think there's micro that can allow you to do that. It just kind of has to happen. And so today is the day where we get to see the instant hatchery dropped by Sulky. Well, drones kind of have like a pseudo ranged attack. And as we saw in that last uh, little clip, like he got two or three shots off doing these little parallel moves to capture the probe, actually understanding the movement of probes really well. Yeah. And then he was going, he was prepared to fight the probe 1v1 to get the hatch up just straight up, which is always difficult to do and very annoying. But uh, he just immediately grabbed the hatch, saw that opening. And this is quite Ooh. rare. He's even going to take the. Yeah. Very greedy third base to the top left. At least that's his plan for the time being. Yep, we'll drop it immediately. Wow. wow. Okay, so this is a really interesting strategy. You can see Sulky trying to uh, get this probe in the middle of the map. And wow, actually uncharacteristically kind of uh, off control, letting it take quite a few Zergling hits. If this uh, probe actually makes it up to the upper left-hand corner, Blue Storm, then that's a lot of information and Free can actually use that you know, to his, uh, to his advantage to punish that base. No, but it doesn't look like he's going to find it. He just continues to scout in the main base. And if, even if in the, in the main base here, there's not a huge indication that those 300 minerals are missing or that the drone is missing. 
if he's a master drone counter, he might say, okay, this looks like it's too few drones, but he might be miscounting because he doesn't know how many drones are at the natural at this exact moment. So it's important for him to kill the probe, obviously, before it goes up there. But the probe is not interested in going up there right now because he doesn't yeah. have any reason to believe there's a hatchery. So he sees the lair and he's like, okay, got good info here with this probe. But he's very unaware of the real truth. Yeah, he's also going to see uh, a lack of an in-base hatchery. Uh, so if this were like a, a three-hatch Hydra or, or Muta uh, tech, you'd want to see that hatchery there. And if it's not there, and you know that your uh, Zerg player is saving money, then you know that that has to be going somewhere else. And so really, really uh, smart play here by Free. Heads up, getting the Zealot to run up and check for that third base. Yep, Zealot going to go exactly to that location. Or Just such an intelligent not. player. Oh, looks like he was considering it. I'm not entirely sure where he was going to go if he wasn't going there, but either way, I think he's got an idea about this just based on that Zealot movement. Either way, um, one of the cool things about taking this base, there's two benefits to taking this base instead of the normal third. Is One is obviously that you um, have gas available at this location, but the secondary one is that it's far away from your opponent and unscouted in right. this case. This probe is still alive, by the way. I mean, he better be glad he hid the hatchery and isn't doing anything else. or. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Free would know everything. It's going to see the spire. Okay, so uh, that is a lot of information to get. And you can see Free was trying to scout the uh, traditional third base location, very close, up at the uh, 9 o'clock position. Didn't see anything there, so uh, you might have gotten a little bit confused. I think at this point Free can kind of figure out what's happening, but not scouting it will remain, uh, will make that upper left-hand corner base a mystery. You know what's really funny about this too is that he only saw the spire, right? And that's the the secret third part of the benefits of taking the top left base is that you can actually build buildings there. You know, you can actually have the hydro right. set up there. So right now, all he's seen and all this Corsair will see is Mila. So he's like, add an extra cannon here. He's, is this is this real? Like, are you actually going to try to meter rush me? And he gets his temple archives up. Everything's normal. Shows the hydras now, though, so no longer a mystery. <laughs> yeah, that's actually important that he sees those. If he came in and didn't see the hydras, he'd be like, all right. And so now more and more information telling Free that there's a base way out there. Um, this Corsair might actually get the Overlord before it dies. If you lose your first Corsair uh, against Zerg, that can kind of uh, set things in a, in a rough direction. He's trying to control it, he will be able to just barely take that Overlord out. Just wants to come in and see if he can find any more additional information about how many Hydras are being built. Yeah. Just totally reads the fake now because he saw the Hydras quite literally. Yeah. makes a ton of cannons. And now Free is in great position. Now he's trying to rush out that Psy Storm. He's trying to get out the High Templar in time to make sure he has an easy hold. He goes over here, he's like, oh, okay, okay, that's what I figured. So he's the extra hatchery going down too, which will allow him to reinforce this. He's desperately adding gateways. He's gonna need those photon Ooh. cans for now. That is very good, able to pick off a Corsair with some early Scourge. Uh, these Zealots creeping out on the map are, are just to scout. They are not gonna go out and look to put on any pressure because Free knows exactly what's coming his way. It's gonna be an attempt, a massive Hydra buff. Now this is similar to the last game where he's looking for the, oh, I love this. He's just like, oh, no, oh, with this. I'm just gonna so, make sure you're not here. But so cool. The the Scourge is really important because with the Scourge you can see, okay, are the High Templar out? How many are there? How long have they been out? These are really important pieces of information here for Solki. And right now he's just said, oh, okay, you don't have any yet. You have the, the Templar Archives, but you don't have any High Templar whatsoever. And he's looking to be aggressive here. He has Lurkers. He's going to dive this straight up. Lurkers going to run by here into the Mineral Line. Such a swift timing here, knowing there are no High Templar, despite being scouted. There's no detection here. These Lurkers are just going to burrow and stay there forever. Uh, this is insane amounts of damage. I didn't actually think that Solki was going to be able to make it all the way behind the Mineral Line, but he does. He runs all the way by, and, uh, you know, there's no... Uh, we still have yet to see how much damage this Dark Templar is again. Looks like several drones are going down, so this is still significant damage for free, but he has to worry about his natural expansion. Yeah, this is a huge problem now. He's going to need High Templar Storm because he doesn't even have his Robo completed to deal with these. Zealot's going to look for a run by over here too into the natural. He actually sneaks all of those by. Drones actually caught oh, here no. on a rally. Nicely done by free. Trying to make this damage uh, against him, obviously countering that somewhat with his own. Observer on the way. Uh, this is a very difficult place for... Oh, the misplaced no, lurker! He missed no. the block! He's going to try to morph it again, but he's, uh, you know, <laughs> he's going to multitask all across the map. Uh, I think it looks like Sulky might be able to barely stabilize. But, uh, Sunken Colony is taking a lot of damage. It's going to eventually fall. I'm not so sure he does hold this without taking more losses. Look, these units are coming out too slow. There's a DT here as well, adding some extra damage. Scourge aren't going to be any help against this. Certainly not. They're going to sit there. Now, 
Free has lost his natural expansion, so both players taking a lot of damage. But it looks like the damage to Sulky might be a little Look, bit this greater. Is, yeah, it looks like they, because all the probes survived, or the majority of them, right? Yeah. And, and now this is just no Zelda the main. He can actually target down the spire. He can kill the spawning oh, pool. No, Free hitting with a huge number of zealots. Even though he doesn't, this is a reminder of last game. Free had no economy in the last. Oh, he's gonna target down the lurker. Oh, he wants he it. Gets the burrow, and he will get that burrow off. So that will defend his base for a little bit longer. But there's no overlords because of that early corsair damage. So many drones killed the top left. That base is barely mining at all. Two drones here. He's basically one base mining versus one base mining. Free's taking a third base, and the zealot harass continues. More zealots killing these drones here. We see the drone drill. Oh, spawning pool is gonna go down. Spawning pool falls. And now the observer's out. So all he has to do is clean up those lurkers. He can retake his natural. This is a great position for Free. But oh, he's even trying to kill this. Soki uh, looks player. defeated. Look at his yeah. face in the player cam. This might be it, man. I, this could be it. I, I think this is going to be it, Wolf. It doesn't look like Sulky has any plans on how to deal with the damage being dealt to his main. He does have three bases up, but he has no way to deal with these DTs. He's almost going to lose his lair. This Overlord is very slow, but it looks like it will just barely be in time to save the lair. But not the drones. Oh, so many of them dying. 13 kills on this DT. Wow. Now the lurkers are cleared here. These lings will be cleared as well. Has a third base up. Soki, I don't know if he scouted it, but he must know at this point it's been remade. His economy is in total shambles. Okay, looks like he hasn't actually added the Nexus yet, which is huge. Just the cannons to make sure to secure it. Mm. Wow, so this was actually really rough for both players uh, for a moment. And then, you know, Free sacked his Nexus. He's like, okay, I can lose this. I can lose my natural because I can get so much more damage done elsewhere. He did. The Zealots came in. Nothing could kill them. The Dark Templar, nothing could kill it. And now, Sulky is basically sent back to the Stone Age. Yeah. So rough for him at the stage, but he, he does have a window of time because he finally cleared everything. It's risky, but he just massively re -droned. You can tell, I mean, look at how quickly this drone base uh, to the top left is resaturated, the main base saturated. This base, it's getting there. But, uh, I mean, he, he definitely brought himself back to economy very quickly, but this allows, okay, this third base is running. I don't know what we saw a picture of earlier, but anyways, the third base is up here for free. Uh, his retaken natural, which would give him three mining bases, is up. He has this Archon tech now. He's had the Temple Archive for so long. He right. added those extra gateways. And he may just crush this top left base. There's yeah. a Lurker and a Sunk in there, though. So Sulky kind of figured his only way back in this game was to somehow find a way to redrone and make up for all that economic harassment. He did. The downside is he has no army. And this is a very high-tech composition coming his way. Those Archons are going to be insanely beefy. Okay, there so is an Observer out. It's all about this uh, Scourge. Can they snipe the Observer? The Overlord is here. Where's trying the to, Observer? Okay, trying to look for it. Oh, there he is. The Observer's down there, but there's no Overlord to scout for it. He'll he be, sees it. Yeah, he'll be able to see it, and there it goes. GG, that's all he needed. He won that one swipe. Maybe that saves him, but that's it, man. Free takes the 2-0. Wow. The upset in a crushing victory to move on through playoffs. And how much more does this mean for Free? His trip to his first ever Brood War Grand Finals. His first ever finals ever. Sulky's had StarCraft II titles. He's actually lost the finals as well. He's been in four, I believe, for StarCraft II. Free has never been in the Grand Finals before. This is his first yeah, time, and is that is so huge for him. It's actually the anniversary of Sulky's first GSL Finals, where he was finally able to seize his first big championship. Well, today is not the day. Uh, it's Free's day, and this is just going to be so impressive uh, for uh, one, really one of the legendary players uh, of Brood Wars past. I mean, this is actually really nuts. I mean, I knew there was a chance Free could upset today. Yeah. I thought it was going to be in Game 3. It was going to be long macro games, not just totally outplaying Sulky in every way. Sulky took a big risk in that game, went for the Hydra, hidden tech, and then got scouted by the Corsair, which is obviously pretty standard. He didn't hide the pooling Hydras. He was going to try to, yeah. to group them up there. They just kind of walked right through the middle when the Corsair came in. Free had the defense set up, had the DT harassment. The DT harass was what won him the game. I like yeah. the, the bust we saw from Sulky. He just ran past the cans. He had that Scourge Scout. Very no well Templar, executed. But yeah. uh, I mean, the DTZ just wasn't ready for that. Has he? If he has a um, Spore Colony on his base? Or, or just Overlords. Just put an Overlord at all of your bases, guys. Easy. Makes it work. But uh, he didn't keep anything back to save those Overlords from any Corsairs that came out there. There weren't that many Corsairs yeah. either. So it's surprising that his Overlords were in such disarray. 
Um, so, I mean, Free played the better series tonight, the better best of three. Perhaps Soki playing all these matches actually caught up with him, playing the match against Flash, playing the semi against uh, Mind, then going and playing against yeah. Bisu. Perhaps he's just a bit exhausted, a bit fatigued, but the better best of three from Free for sure. So here is your result from tonight's matches. Free will take a 2-0 victory over Solki and advance to the grand finals to face off against Effer. So that's going to be a great one, man. One of the <laughs> great legends of Brood War, an OSL champion in effort. Free has his first finals. And, you know, most people, myself included, thought we were going to have that ZBZ finals. It was going to be very likely, but yeah. not the case here, man. And it's so rare, actually, that a Protoss player makes a, a finals in Brood War and especially wins it. There's only been a few, you know, in history. Yeah. So it, it's definitely the... Like least likely race to win a finals in terms of Brood War history, right? So it's cool we have a Protoss in the finals free. It's his first finals. This could be like the Cinderella story that sends him, um, you know, to his first win as well, his first yeah. title, his first championship. So let's actually go ahead and get some thoughts with free. We're going to send it over to our presentation uh, with uh, <laughs> Effort, who is going to be his super troll interviewer. <laughs> First step to being a good interviewer. He uh, is going to make his reporter debut here with uh, Free. Also needs to remember to hold the microphone close to his mouth. So first of all, congratulations, Free. How do you feel? <laughs> Free says, you know, I, I'm, very, I'm very touched that you're following in my footsteps and becoming uh, my interviewer today. So, I, you know, this is my first finals experience, um, so I'm very touched and very moved by this and also very motivated. So, Effort says, uh, so, you know, as somebody who's actually won a uh, championship, you know, it's very uh, important. So, Free asks, said, uh, yeah, well, you've only won one championship. 2010 Korean Air Star League. Now, in the first match, Free had a, uh, uh, a uh, Reaver coming out very quickly. So Free says, yeah, it was working actually really well in practice. Uh, especially since Zergs have been playing very well on Circuit Breaker lately, so I had to try something really daring to make it work. What an insane strat. I mean, yeah. that is so uncommon. <laughs> now, how did you feel when uh, Solki rushed into his main and was able to scout that? Free says, you know, at first I was really surprised because I didn't think about lurkers uh, at all in that second game. Um, that was a big oversight on my part and I'm uh, going to definitely try to uh, be a lot more in control when I play against you, Effort. <laughs> Effort getting interrupted by the Korean commentators. Well, we're yeah. picking the finals maps. So we are going to actually move on and uh, pick these final maps. Effort kind of uh, interrupted there by our commentators for a second. But here we go. We're going to pick our final maps for our first ever, ever SSL Classic Brood War Grand Finals. <laughs> for saying, uh, yeah, you're actually really slow at picking these maps. So Effort says, the first game is on Neo Jade. So that is Effort's pick. Yes, of course, that we actually do seed the pl uh, playoff players to be able to pick the first map. The yeah. higher seeded players, I mean, get the map pick. Circuit Breaker will be Effort, the uh, game number two. Apologizing, saying I'm a little bit slow and uh, bad at picking this. but So first game uh, is uh, decided by Effort. Second map will be on Circuit Breaker. That's right. See what uh, he draws next. Free wanted to draw, but... It's actually up to effort here to make the draws. We saw Free make the drawings yesterday. Yep. Higher seated player picks up the uh, the maps. Blue so Storm. Yeah, there we go. Blue Storm. It's literally what it is. All right, so Blue Storm is going to be the next one. A chance to see a pretty good PVZ on that in game two today. 
Our final map. What could it possibly be? Neo Medusa. There it is. So that will be our second to last. And our final map, game five. We're not going to do the repeat. It will be match point. Oh, right. sick. Match point, literally match point. <laughs> Big fan. I, I really do hope we make it all the way to game number five, not just for the memes, but also because it would be really hyped to see such a full series. I love that like the crowd is like totally silent because uh, they don't and get it. so awkward and you and I are just like, sick. <laughs> <laughs> Crowd's like, what are the English commentators talking about? <laughs> So, so Effort actually asks Free as his interviewer. So, uh, how are you going to prepare for the finals, Free? Free says, "You know, I think I'll just do what I always do, <laughs> saying uh, Effort's a pretty good player." He's like, "I'm going to prepare a strong defense and a strong offense." I'm like, "Oh my wow. god!" Wow! Oh my god! You're so good. <laughs> So, final words from Effort saying, uh, I'll see you again next week as the champion. So, some strong words there at the end, comparatively. Uh, but yeah, I think the really uh, surprising thing for me going into the finals is uh, just going to be how good Free looked against, uh, I guess, Zerg players overall, both in his uh, previous series against Solki and the round robin, and his games here tonight, he just looks, looks super clean, and you know, maybe there was a little bit of uh, hesitation by Solki, uh, uh, some, uh, a few bad decisions, but Free's strategies overall, uh, very interesting and very well executed. Yeah, I mean, it, it was definitely a pretty smart series overall, I would say. So here are our finals. Uh, let's just repeat these for you guys. We're going to be Jade, Circuit Breakers, Blue Storm, Neo Medusa, and Match Point will be our best of five grand finals. Because that is how our Brood War finals have been done historically. So it's going to be at uh, the Nexon Arena here where we are now. So if you want to get tickets, go to that link right now and buy them. It's going to be, of course, on the 10th of June. That's not this coming Saturday, but the following Saturday at 6 p.m. And it'll be the precursor to the Premier Finals, of course, so come and watch the Brood War, then watch the StarCraft 2, whichever yeah. StarCraft you prefer. We've got both if you're like us and you like both, and it's going to be one of the best days of your life. Yeah, and I mean, this is going to be our Brood War Finals here at the SSL, but the ASL Brood War Grand Finals are going to be this coming weekend. So lots of Brood War, lots of Finals action, lots of epic games. It's a good time to be a fan of any StarCraft. That's right. StarCraft is great. StarCraft is love. StarCraft is life. Indeed Rapid. it is, Wolf. So that's going to do it for our Brood War broadcast tonight. Um, really good games tonight. Really looking forward to the finals. Um, and uh, looking forward to the games coming up. This is not, uh, we're not done for today. Uh, we're going to be moving on to our uh, premiere uh, games coming up next. That's right. Valdez is up there on the second floor. I see him. He doesn't see me, but he's up there. He's waiting. Uh, he's in his little caster waiting chair, or he's watching at his VIP sure, he's seat. He's not as cool as us. We don't. He's not. He doesn't get to be on stage just yet. Well, sure. he'll come down in a minute as soon as he realizes that we are closing, and he will come over and sit with me, and we're going to cast the premiere uh, playoffs, where we're going to decide who faces innovation in the ZBZ. It's of course uh, going to be a good CBZ. I'm excited for it myself. It's going to be, of course, Biel versus Solar, defending SSL champion. <laughs> Did he just text yeah, us? Yeah, Bre Brendan just texted us. He's like, okay, well, thanks for listening, Brendan. Big fan. Big See fan. him in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Uh, if you guys were only here for Brood War, make sure to stick around and watch a little bit of StarCraft 2. It's going to be two of the best Zerg players around right now. So uh, those should actually be really good games. That's right. So that's about going to do it for our classic broadcast. We're going to have a little short commercial break, about 20 minutes or so, 20 to 30, before we go into that premiere broadcast. So tell your friends. It's going to be, of course, live in the same channel. You don't even have to leave. You can just stay here. It'll be your little waiting room as you get ready for premiere. For myself and Rapid, we will see you at the finals if you're a Brood War fan. Otherwise, stick around. We'll be back after this commercial break. Oh, yeah.